Welcome to Class Act Lifestyle, your go-to hub for mastering the art of living well. Here, we empower you with life-changing skills, practical wisdom, and inspiring ideas to lead a fulfilling lifestyle. Discover a treasure trove of teachings from personal development to health, relationships, finance, and more. Welcome back, friends. In the previous video, we embarked on an enlightening journey through the intricate world of banking and money. We deciphered the fundamental logic driving the banking industry, shedding light on its role as a financial intermediary, its commitment to safety and security, and its crucial functions in facilitating economic activities, managing risk, and transmitting monetary policy. We have also ventured into the diverse landscape of banks, from commercial giants to cooperative institutions, with real-world examples illustrating their unique roles. Additionally, we explored the diverse forms of money, featuring John as our guide through commodity money, fiat currency, cryptocurrencies, and more. Together, we unveiled the intricacies of finance, enhancing our financial literacy and gaining valuable insights into the systems that underpin modern economies. As we continue our journey, we'll delve even deeper into the world of finance, building on this foundational knowledge. Let's start with the basics. Money supply, often referred to as the money stock, is the total amount of money in an economy at a given point in time. The government plays a vital role in regulating and managing the money supply to ensure economic stability. To illustrate this, let's imagine a simplified example. Imagine a country named Prosperia. Prosperia's government is like the conductor of an orchestra carefully managing the different instruments that make up the money supply. In Prosperia, the money supply comprises three major components. M1. This includes physical currency, coins and banknotes, and checkable deposits. It's the most liquid form of money, readily accessible for transactions. Let's say Prosperia's government wants to increase the M1 money supply. They decide to print more banknotes and mint more coins, making it easier for citizens to carry out transactions. M2. M2 includes M1 and adds savings accounts, time deposits, and other near money substitutes. It's less liquid than M1, but still highly accessible. To influence M2, the government might decide to lower interest rates. Lower interest rates encourage people to keep more of their money in savings accounts and time deposits thereby increasing M2. M3 M3 is the broadest measure and includes M2 plus larger time deposits, institutional money market funds, and other large liquid assets. It's the least liquid but encompasses a wide range of financial instruments. If Prosperia's government wants to affect M3, they might introduce new financial products like large institutional money market funds. This would increase the availability of such assets which are counted in the M3 money supply. Now, let's delve deeper into the measures of money supply and create a basic understanding with some intriguing examples. Economists classify the money supply into different categories to capture the varying degrees of liquidity and accessibility of money. Let's explore the primary measures of money supply. M0 M0, also known as the monetary base represents the total of all physical currency in circulation, including coins and banknotes issued by the central bank. In Prosperia, M0 is like the money that's physically available to the public. M1, as we discussed, M1 includes the most liquid assets like coins, banknotes, and checkable deposits. In our Prosperian example, it's like the money you have in your wallet or your checking account. M2. M2 is a broader measure that includes M1 and adds savings accounts, time deposits, and other near money substitutes. It's less liquid but more readily accessible than M3. M3, M3 is the most expansive measure, encompassing M2 and larger, less liquid assets. In Prosperia, it includes things like institutional money market funds and other significant financial instruments. L, the L measure goes beyond M3, accounting for assets that aren't easily accessible to the public like large time deposits and institutional investments. It represents the broadest view of money supply, regulating the money supply. 
in our orchestra analogy the government plays the role of the conductor making decisions to control the money supply based on the economic situation here are a few tools they use open market operations the government can buy or sell government securities such as bonds in the open market when they buy bonds inject money into the economy increasing the money supply when they sell bonds reduce the money supply reserve requirements the government can mandate that banks hold a certain percentage of their deposits in reserve with the central bank when reserve requirements are increased it reduces the money banks can lend shrinking the money supply when reduced it has the opposite effect discount rate the government can adjust the interest rate at which banks can borrow from the central bank when the discount rate is lowered it encourages banks to borrow more increasing the money supply when raised it discourages borrowing reducing the money supply in summary understanding the money supply and its management by the government is crucial for comprehending the overall financial health of a country just like our prosperian orchestra the government carefully conducts the different components of the money supply to maintain economic stability we've explored the measures of money supply from the most tangible m0 to the abstract l the government uses various tools like open market operations reserve requirements and the discount rate to regulate the money supply and ensure prosperia's economic symphony plays in harmony please note that this is a simplified educational explanation and real world economics involves many more intricacies and factors in our upcoming video we will dive deeper into the fascinating topic of inflation we will explore the different types of inflation and gain a comprehensive understanding of how governments employ various strategies to manage and mitigate its effects on their economies. Join us as we unravel the complexities of this economic phenomenon and discover the tools and policies that governments use to maintain price stability and ensure a healthy financial environment. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of money supply and government control. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more informative content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, please leave a comment below. Until next time, keep learning and stay financially savvy. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to share it with your friends and family. I'll catch you in the next one. Please like and subscribe.